Welcome back everyone. I hope you're having a good day today. We're going to be in Life of Fred, Australia. If you have an Australia book, go ahead and get your book out now. Remember, you can press pause at any time during this video. Today, we're going to be on page 115, chapter 18, and the title is In a Hurry. Fred ran onto the plane. He found his seat in a hurry. He buckled his seatbelt. He sat up straight. In short, he did everything he could to make the plane take off as quickly as possible. All the other passengers walked. They chatted with their friends as they found their seats. It was 10 minutes to four. The flight attendant stood up and showed everyone how to put on a seat belt. That took another two minutes. Fred wanted to point to his seat belt to show that he already had his on. Anything to hurry things up. Finally, the plane taxied to the runway and took off. It had been a long trip. The bus ride to Wichita, the flight to Los Angeles, the flight to Sydney, and now the flight to Wagga Wagga. After takeoff, the flight attendant stood up again and said, this flight will be a very short one. Fred thought, yes, yes, yes. She continued, therefore we will not be serving peanuts and soft drinks. Fred thought, I'm really not hungry right now. I just want to get there before the Board of Missions office closes. She said, for those of you who are new to Wagga Wagga, here is an information sheet. She passed out the sheets. At first, Fred didn't want to read it because that would take time. Then he realized that not reading it wouldn't make the plane go any faster. The Wyrid jury people were the first people to inhabit this region. In their language, Wagga meant crow. The Wyrid jury didn't make their words plural by adding an S. They were much more logical. To make a word plural, they just repeated the word twice. Wagga meant crow, and Wagga Wagga meant crows. Instead of saying, how many sisters do you have? You would say, how many sister sister do you have? Fred giggled. He thought of the word autobiography. That's a story you write about your life. He pictured going into a library and asking the librarian, where are the autobiography autobiography located? It would be much easier to ask where are the autobiographies located? Wait, I, your reader, just noticed something. Do you realize what you, Mr. Author, just did? What do you mean? I didn't do anything. Yes, you did. You snuck in a new way to make a plural. You mean autobiography, autobiography? No, silly, I mean autobiographies. Story, stories, berry, berries, body, bodies, city, cities, enemy, enemies. That means there are six ways to make plurals in English. If it ends in Y, change it to I-E-S. You are almost right. You have forgotten about boy, boys, monkey, monkeys, and bay, bays. The official rule is Y becomes I-E-S unless the letter before the Y is a vowel, A-E-I-O-U. The flight attendant said, please make sure your seat is in the upright and locked position and your seat belt is fastened. We are about to land. Fred could think of no happier words. Okay, are you ready for your turn to play? Go ahead and grab a sheet of paper and a pencil. Remember, you can press pause at any time. Let's begin. Number one, make the plural of each of these six words. These six words use the six different ways of making a plural in English. 80, business, head, foot, deer, wolf. Number two, what is the past tense of these verbs? Sing, bark, slide. Number three, circle alliteration in first two lines of this famous poem. Ring around the rosy, a pocket full of posies. Okay, here are your answers. Go ahead and check your work. Now, are you ready for today's homeschooling meme? Here you go. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that one. Join me here tomorrow for chapter 19. Bye for now.
Of course, there is a seventh way to make plurals in English. No, no, you can't do this to me. I, your reader, want a simpler language like that of the wired jury. Of course, there will be fewer books and fewer films in that language. Okay, let's get it over with. The seventh way is pretty rare. Latin-based words ending in U.S. A male graduate of a school is called an alumnus. Male graduates are alumni. The eighth way is even rarer. A female graduate is called an alumna. Female graduates are alumnae.